This is video 8.05 on transcription, part of the protein synthesis chapter. And if you remember in the previous video, we said that transcription was the process where the genetic code, the process by which the genetic code is taken from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. From the nucleus to the cytoplasm. So <clears throat> what you see here, and you can tell because it's a double helix, is DNA. Remember, uh, so if we have our DNA, and down here we're gonna see we have um, RNA. and specifically mRNA. Um, so let's add that process by which the genetic code is taken from the nucleus to the cytoplasm by messenger RNA, or we call it mRNA. <clears throat> and remember the differences between DNA and RNA. So we have DNA is double-stranded, And it has a thymine. And it's only located in the nucleus. RNA is single stranded. All RNA is a single strand. Thymine is replaced by uracil. Uh, uracil, and it is uh, it can be um, in the nucleus or the cytoplasm. So um, DNA is kind of trapped. And so what we want to do, if you remember, we're going to build those. Um, uh, we're going to build the proteins at ribosome. So in order to do that, we have to get the message. So let's assume that this is my nuclear membrane, right? This is my nuclear membrane, and this is gonna be the cytoplasm. And up here is the nucleus. I have to get this piece of genetic information from the nucleus out to the cytoplasm. <clears throat> so the first thing that we see that happens is the DNA unzips. Again, we talked about unzipping when it replicates. But um, uh, that has to happen again. So I'm going to do the steps in green. Number one, the DNA unzips. And it doesn't just happen automatically. There's a, an enzyme that does that. Uh, so every one of these steps has a very intricate biochemistry. And there's almost always an enzyme that's involved. So once this DNA unzips, you can see here's one strand and here's the other strand. And in purple, I have my mRNA. And they show the enzyme. The name of the enzyme is RNA polymerase. <clears throat> and this is the enzyme right here. It looks like a big glob. Uh, this enzyme moves along the strand and it brings in free RNA bases and it attaches them in a complementary manner. <clears throat> so the next DNA base is guanine. So this is going to be cytosine. I'm going to have a guanine, a cytosine, a cytosine. But look at this. I, I get to this, I have an adenine. Well, normally we would say this is going to be a thymine, but if you remember, um, RNA does not have thymine, it has uracil. So after it unzips, the enzyme, the enzyme uh, adds complementary bases. Complementary mRNA nucleotides. And once it's finished, then the mRNA will detach, leave, and go into the cytoplasm. So at the finish, the mRNA will exit the nucleus. So let's take a closer look at how this gets transcribed. So here I have a strand of DNA. 
And down here, I want to write the complementary mRNA. So if I have a guanine on this side, hopefully, go ahead and take a second and uh, give yourself a quick mental um, check. Can you, can you tell me what the complementary is going to be? All right, so this is going to be cytosine. If this is cytosine, it's going to be guanine. Guanine. Now, here's that adenine. And normally we would say there's going to be a thymine here, but mRNA does not have thymine. It has uracil. So this is going to be uracil. I'm going to have adenine, adenine, uracil, guanine, cytosine, uracil, adenine, guanine, cytosine, uracil, adenine. And it's important to note that mRNA, when it goes out to the cytoplasm and when it gets turned into a protein, mRNA is read three bases at a time. So if I'm reading this word, I don't look at the T, I don't say to myself T R A N S. C R I B E T H I S D N. I see words transcribe this too. And the mRNA is read in very same fashion. So this is read as a CGG, as a UAA, as a UGC, as a UAG, and as a CUA. These three section pieces, so the three section pieces are called a codon. Codon. These are the three section pieces, three section pieces of, whoops, P-I-E-C-E-S, of mRNA. <clears throat> the interesting thing is that each three-piece section corresponds to an amino acid. And, and that's a little bit confusing for you now. I think it'll make more sense when we do um, a translation. But for now, what I just want to, I want you to add this to your notes is that every codon, every codon, that's a three, three letter section, corresponds to an amino acid. Corresponds to an amino acid. And if you remember, amino acids are the monomer of proteins. So I have a chart and I'm gonna look up CGG and then I'm gonna look up UAA and then I'm gonna come down here and look up CUA. G, UAA, I'm writing those down and CUA. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the chart. I'm gonna show you how this chart works. All right, the first, amino acid that I want to um, determine is from the codon CGG. So what I do is I come over here and you see here in this box, it says first letter. My first letter is C. My second letter is a G. So up here is the grid for second letter. So I'm here, my first letter is a C. I come down to the G column. And my third letter is a G. So that means that CGG is the amino acid ARG. Now, also in your packet, you have a table that has the names of all of the amino acids. And what we see is that ARG is arginine, arginine. All right, let's do this again. Let's go to UA, uh, UAA. So my first letter is a U. My second letter is an A, and my third letter is an A here. That says this is a stop. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about what this means. If uh, a protein is being built and you hit this codon, the protein will stop and it will be released from the ribosome. So it doesn't make sense that this is in the middle, but I just kind of grabbed some letters. Okay, then we have CUA. So I come to C for my first letter, come to U for my second letter, and I go to A. CUA is amino acid. L-E-U, so just to be clear, this is the codon, this is the amino acid, oops, the amino acid. So 
we have all of the codons that are possible next to the amino acids. And remember, there are 20 amino acids, 20 amino acids possible. But you'll notice that here we go for arginine, there are three different uh, codons you could have. So there's multiple codons for amino acids. But if you counted up all the different amino acids we have here, you would have 20 plus this special stop codon. All right, you're gonna see as we go through translation, we're gonna come back to this table and you're gonna have a better idea of how to use it. So, but for now, what are our takeaways? So our takeaways are that we have um, in transcription, the genetic code goes from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. We do that with mRNA. We reviewed the differences between DNA and mRNA. And then we looked at the steps, the DNA unzips, the enzyme adds the bases and then the strand so we would actually have a strand of mRNA leaving the cytoplasm to go out to a ribosome. So let's say finish, it exits the nucleus and it goes to a ribosome. And we're going to see when it gets to the ribosome, it gets, uh, it gets um, read in three nucleotide groups called codons. This one would have a complementary strand like this and it would be read by codons broken into threes. In the next one, we're going to talk about uh, tRNA, and then we're going to show how finally we form the proteins. Okay, that's it for this video. All for now.